Hello again, this is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. And here we are in part four of our eight-part basic training tutorial series. We've started up our project, we've gathered our media, and now is the time to actually begin making the movie. This is where it gets fun, because here on the timeline, we're going to gather the assets here from our project media panel and find the story in there. To add a clip to your timeline, very simple. You can just drag it from the media panel down to the timeline. That's really basically all there is to it. Now, most of what you'll be doing on your timeline is simply assembling clips, trimming them, and splitting them. When you trim a clip, you're essentially taking video from either end of a clip. So I want to remove some video from the beginning, or I want to remove some video from the end. In order to do that, all I need to do is hover my mouse over the beginning or end of a clip, and I'll get that little indicator. Drag like that, I've removed a couple of seconds of footage from the beginning of the clip. Likewise, I can remove video from the end of the clip. Hover, drag in. Now I want you to notice something, by the way, as I removed video, that the video to the right slid in to fill the gap. That's something called Auto Ripple. Now I actually do an entire separate tutorial on Auto Ripple because Audio Ripple can get a little bit challenging and a little bit complicated. But the basic principle is that when Ripple is enabled, any changes you make to your timeline will ripple on down the timeline. If I add media to my timeline, it's going to push all the clips on down to the right. If I remove a clip from my timeline by selecting it and clicking the delete button, all the clips from the right move in to fill the gap. Now that's the basic simple principle of Auto Ripple. Now, Auto Ripple is enabled and disabled right here on your timeline. There's the Auto Ripple. When it's turned off, when I make a change, say for instance trimming a clip or trimming an event on my timeline, notice that nothing else moves and nothing moves to fill in the gap. Sometimes you're going to need to do that. Uh, I generally operate with it on, except when I don't want it on. So it's kind of my default setting is to have it on. Anyway, that is trimming. I'm going to turn Auto Ripple back on here. That is trimming, trimming from the beginning or the end of a clip. Now another feature or another tool you often need as you're assembling your clips on your timeline is the ability to split or to slice your clips. If you select the clip on your timeline or the event on your timeline, position your playhead and you come down here along the bottom of the timeline, you'll see that you have a couple of options here. Splitting simply slices the clip in half. There it is, bing. If on the other hand, I have a clip selected here or an event selected, I also have the option of removing everything on that clip up to the point of the playhead or removing everything after the playhead. Generally, this is the one I use. You can also use the shortcut, by the way, S. There you go, just S on your keyboard will also slice your clip. And once you've sliced your clip or your event, you can actually remove segments from the middle. So those are the three most important things to know, trimming, splitting, and auto ripple. Hope you'll join me for part five where we're gonna look at how to add special effects to your video. Make it a little bit special, huh? I'm Steve Grisetti, thanks for joining me. We'll see you in part five.